Hello, this is our video for CVM 13. And the question here is, when does a constant velocity model apply? I want to point out before we go through this that this is directly relevant to part C of the motion project checklist. That is, after you make your graph that says do not fit a trend line to your whole data, we need to think about fitting a trend line to one part of the graph that looks constant. And this says the velocity should be approximately constant. Constant velocity is, velocity is just a model, a simplification of part of the situation. Notice this connects to CVM 13. We're talking about CVM 13 right now. So let's check this out first of all, see what this is talking about. Um, in science, a model is a simplification. Scientists intentionally simplify something that's happening in the real world in a way that's useful for making predictions. And this is the key. All models include assumptions and approximations, and all models are only sort of correct. The fact that something's not exactly constant velocity doesn't mean that constant velocity isn't a useful approximation, simplification. So it's up to the scientists, it's up to you in this project to determine whether the constant velocity straight line model is useful or not in a certain situation. So I want to show you some examples of what we're talking about. Um, this is some work by um, Audrey Amara, who were working with a bowling ball that rolled back and forth on the screen. Um, and notice that th this graph is beautiful. The data they collected is fantastic. Um, the one thing that is relevant to what we're saying is notice some parts of this graph look kind of curved, and some parts of the graph look definitely straight. We want to be pretty picky with what we fit a straight line to. And I think I agree that this looks like straight line data. That is, if I, you can see the points right here, here, and here. If I actually put a ruler here, it goes very, very close to all of those points. So I would, rather than connecting these points one to another, I would say, okay, this whole thing looks constant velocity and I would try to draw a straight line through all of those points uh, as close as I could get to all of these points. This here where the bowling ball is staying at a constant position that is a velocity of zero that definitely looks like a straight line and maybe part of this could be a straight line like I could I could draw a ruler straight line through this but it looks here like the ball is actually speeding up. In the video, this is where someone actually kicks the ball and the ball speeds up gradually. I wouldn't want my straight line to continue through here because this part is clearly curved. So I would probably erase all these connecting the points and just find straight line sections to focus on. Otherwise, this graph is fantastic. Really, really nice work. Let's look at another one. Um, this is a graph of a different bowling ball experiment um, done by Kadaitu and Isatu and Michaela. And notice, this is a bowling ball that hits a bowling pin. And they've made a decision to begin with, which is very consistent with what we've done so far in class, of drawing a straight line through the whole thing. But I would suggest that this point it, which is where the ball hits the pin is actually really important. I think that the that the slope, if I draw a straight line through this first group of points, that this slope is actually steeper before the ball hits the pin than after the ball hits the pin. That is, my ruler straight line is steeper here than it is here. That shows me that the ball slowed down and I want to actually analyze that in my analysis. I wouldn't want to draw just one straight line through the whole thing. I would want to break it up into two parts before it hits the pin and after it hits the pin. Um, again, really, really nice graph here. We just want to think about how we use our constant velocity model. We know it's got to be only sort of correct, but make intelligent choices. Think carefully about how to use that straight line idea, how to use that straight line constant velocity model. Um, last thing, um, this is one last uh, demonstration of work. This is a video about jet skiers skiing back and forth, done by Javi Daniela and Yolanda. And you can tell this video is real interesting. They've already broken it up into two different parts. Um, and you can tell that this 
first part looks pretty constant, but then this thing slows down and turns in the other direction. There's this kind of curved line that happens here, and we don't want to focus on curved lines yet. We just want to identify parts of this motion that we think are straight. So maybe that could be this section. Maybe that could be this section. I'm not sure. This is a pretty complicated video. There's a lot of things speeding up or slowing down, but we definitely don't want to try to fit a straight line through this because this is something slowing down and speeding up in the opposite direction. We'll focus on that. We'll learn about that. But for now, we just want to make smart choices about what parts of our graph look like a straight line. So the takeaway here, the thing that we want to focus on here is um, this. In the motion project, think carefully about what parts time intervals that is what chunks of time um, of the video show constant velocity straight line um, motion straight line motion um, we'll add more to this but the main idea here the thing that we need to take away is that you as the scientists choose what straight line motion means. Nothing's going to be absolutely perfectly straight because we're not dealing with perfectly absolutely perfect situations. But there's going to be situations that look really, really close to constant velocity straight line motion. And you want to identify those spots, those, those uh, time intervals, so that you can draw a trend line to them, calculate a slope, and so on and so forth.